it's Mrs. Demick's story time. Hello boys and girls, welcome back for another story. Today I have a story called The Snatch-A-Book. Who's stealing all the stories? One dark, dark night in Burrow Down, a rabbit named Eliza Brown found a book and settled down when a snatch-a-book flew into town. Do you see the snatch-a-book? Hmm. In every house, in every bed, a bedtime book was being read. Look at all of them. They're so cozy in their homes. Tales of dragons spitting flames, witches playing spooky games, pirates on the seven seas, princesses trying to sleep on peas, and every child in every bed listened hard to each word said. Eliza Brown at number three was reading quite contentedly. Her curtains opened just a chink. She barely had a chance to blink. Her storybook di just disappeared. Eliza found that very weird. Look at that. Just, just disappeared. The little owls on mommy's lap were quite surprised to hear a tap against their bedroom window glass. Tap, tap. The noise came really fast. Before they'd even looked around, the book was gone without a sound. The wind blew wild across the sky. The smallest squirrel heard a cry. What's that? She whispered to her dad. But then, and this was really bad, before they'd had a chance to look, she'd lost her very favorite book. Look, the snatch a book. Got it. And so it went night after night. Books disappeared from left and right. Five books here and six books there. The shelves began to look quite bare. In Burrow Down, the rumor spread of book thieves under every bed. Eliza Brown at number three was keen to solve the mystery. What do you think happened to all those books? She planned one night to lie in wait and use a pile of books as bait. Long hours passed without a peep. She'd nearly fallen fast asleep. When suddenly Eliza heard a flap of wings, a bat, a bird, Eliza saw a shadow loom enormous right across her room. What kind of monster could it be? Eliza thought, you don't scare me. And yet her heart was beating fast. She'd have to face the thief at last. Would you be brave enough to do that? I don't know if I would. She threw the window open wide and shouted to the thing outside, stop stealing all our books right now. Just give them back. I don't care how. I'm sorry, came a little voice. I really am. I had no choice. Eliza looked down in surprise. She couldn't quite believe her eyes. So who are you and what's your name? The creature hung its head in shame. He mumbled with a mournful look. I'm just a little snatch a book. Oh, he's actually kind of cute. Eliza nodded solemnly. She sat the creature on her knee. You can't just come and help yourself to every book on every shelf. A tear rolled from the creature's eye and softly he began to cry. I know it's wrong, but can't you see? I've got no one to read to me. Eliza sighed. He looked so sad. If he just had a mom or dad to read him stories every night, well, then he might behave all right. That very night, they hatched a plan, and so the Snatch-A-Book began. What do you think their plan is? To give back all the books he'd picked, Eliza Brown was very strict. Then trying hard to prove himself, he stacked them neatly on each shelf. And when he made his full amends, Eliza called, called on all her friends and told them how he'd worked all night to turn a wrong into a right. And now each night in Burrow Down, as darkness falls upon the town, in every house, in every bed, a bedtime book is being read. I just love these pictures. Do you see them all in their homes? Which home would you want to live in? And if you take a closer look, you might just see the Snatch-A-Book perched happily on someone's bed, listening hard to each word said. Do you see the Snatch-A-Book?
the end. Thanks for coming to read a story with me today. I'll see you guys again tomorrow. I love you. Bye.